My friend Alma died while traveling in Brazil a couple weeks ago. How did she die? Who killed my friend? What happened to her? These are all questions that I have and I've been having a hard time dealing with grief as we're trying to figure out what happened to her. It remains a mystery and the story has been going viral internationally, which has been hard to see many strangers talking about the story because people are calling out the details, being confusing and making little sense. It's a mystery crime story. Thousands of people worldwide in Brazil, Israel, and the U.S. have been calling out the sketchy and weird details of the story. And they're calling for the police to continue investigating this tragedy so that my friend gets justice and, and women don't have to go through this in the future. In this video, I'm going to share the details of this story and the lessons we can learn from Alma's beautiful life and her tragic death. The intention of this video is for us to learn from what happened to my friend so that crime against women don't happen again worldwide and things that we can look for to avoid and for travelers for us to avoid. I'm gonna give some safety tips as well. What's crazy about this story is that there's two different possible scenarios of how she died and there's two suspects. One is unknown and one was with her. Before we talk about her death, let's talk about her beautiful life. My girl Alma had a life well lived. She had a passion for traveling the world. She took many months to discover herself after working in the military. She was from Israel. She had no end date for her travels. She just had this mentality that she was gonna let life take her and see what happened. She had a passion for art. Here's a pic of her painting. Yes, girl. She loved new activities as well. This is a video that I captured of her doing this Brazilian fight dance called Caipurera. Girl, I've been in Brazil for so long, I still don't know how to speak it, but Caipurera, I think that's how you say it. It's a fight dance and she was killing it, okay? And I forgot to send this to her. Um, but I will always cherish this moment and just being able to see her live. She saw something new, she went for it, which I loved about her. She also had a passion for making new friends. This is a photo of our girl squad we had. We went to many beaches together. We traveled together. We had an amazing time. And I had the pleasure of meeting her and knowing her for her last two months of living. So I'm honored to know you, Alma. And please, ah, let me channel love to do justice for you and find justice for you. So please be with me as I do this video, Alma and God. All right. On the day of her death, I got this intuition, weird feeling that something was wrong with her. We had been messaging regularly and I messaged her, hey girl, how are you thinking of you? And saw that she messaged me a week ago and didn't see it. And she didn't respond all day, which is strange because she usually is very responsive and quick. So I was like, maybe she's asleep. We have different time zones now. 12 hours after I messaged her, I had a friend who didn't know Alma, who is from Brazil, who said that she saw this woman on the news in Brazil named Alma who died falling off a cliff in Brazil and she saw that on Instagram and saw that she fo Alma followed me and was like do you know this person Victor and I was like yes and I was just like in disbelief and confused especially because everything was in Portuguese and so I had to translate everything and just like crying and just such heavy energy on my spirit especially because I had that weird feeling earlier that something was wrong with her and unfortunately that intuition was right um and it's been hard you know dealing with grief like especially for someone i just met you know she was so young and i thought i had so much time to get to know her spend with her thought we would go on vacation together or i'd go visit her somewhere and knowing that that's not a reality and that i can't just message her and text her and um that she'll never you know be in my life and you know us get to grow together is really really sad let's talk about the details Two weeks ago, Alma allegedly went on a hike with a friend. The friend is claiming that they were fearful that they were gonna get allegedly robbed. And so Alma took off running and jumped over a wall and cliff and fell to her death 50 feet. That's the story that he's telling. Police do not have a, another suspect. The only person that they know is the man that was with her. He goes by the name of Dan Hahn and the police has allegedly interrogated him multiple times and news outlets have shared the details. So let's go through that. Ynet News has reported that in this interrogation, 
the three times that the police interrogated him, he gave very conflicting reports. And so we're going to go through that. Ynet News reports that Dan Han claimed that they were approached by a motorcyclist during the first interrogation. The Daily Mail also shares news that Dan did not see the person on the motorcycle that was approaching them. And he claims, at least at this in this interview, that they didn't see a weapon. This is strange because this would allegedly mean that he didn't see the suspect or have details on the motorcycle. So there's no way of finding out this mysterious story that he's claimed that happened. There's no details or footage. Also, I have a question. How did Alma and Dan feel threatened if they didn't see the bike, if they didn't feel threatened with weapons? So something sounds fishy. So the police thought this as well, allegedly, so they interrogated him a second time. And Ynet News reports that he completely changed his statement and story from the first interrogation, saying that the suspect was actually in a red car, no longer saying that it was a motorcycle. Huh? Like the first interrogation, Ynet News points out that this contradicts the previous statement that the two were walking and a motorcyclist scared them at 7 p.m. and they feared a robbery attempt. The Daily Mail shares more details about this second new version of the story. Dan allegedly told and mentioned that the red vehicle approached them, but a weapon was never flashed. What gets me is that there's a major difference between the first story and the second story. So thousands of people have been like, what the heck? Like, this story sounds made up or something's wrong. Why are we hearing multiple different stories? How did they feel threatened with no weapon? They were walking along a road coming from Christ the Redeemer, allegedly. And so, of course, cars were passing them while they were walking down this hike. Um, but I'm confused how they didn't feel threatened with the gun how this would escalate to my friend jumping over a wall and a fence down a hill 50 feet and dying. I question this story because the multiple new outlets, including the Daily Mail and Ynet News, are pointing out this major discrepancy that Dan allegedly changed the story multiple times, including the details of the suspect. Police were allegedly suspicious after this alleged narrative change, so they interrogated him a third time, according to Daily Mail. The Daily Mail also shares that Dan gave more details that they just met 24 hours before in Rio and he claims that he couldn't save her. Another question I have is if they were getting robbed, why did none of them get robbed at all? Why is my friend dead and why is he completely scratchless? What's going on? That doesn't make sense. When you're in Brazil, I've never heard someone say they threatened to rob me or they screamed, hey, I'm going to rob you and they don't they didn't rob him. In Brazil, that don't happen. They just come up to you and they rob you. So I'm, I'm confused how no one's robbed. You have all your items. Alma had her stuff. Alma also only carried like little cash, had a broken cheap Android phone. So she didn't have any valuables. I find it hard to believe that she would risk her life jumping off a cliff in a wall like to save her cheap broken phone and little cash. I don't believe that happened. This story makes no sense. Ynet News shares that there was a man named Mario Da Silva who was nearby the scene when this happened and shared that he heard people shouting for help. So he went down to help Alma and the authorities allegedly almost took an hour to show up and she was reportedly com confirmed dead as soon as the medical authorities arrived, which is so sad. The Daily Mail shares that Alma's death is being investigated by the Capital Homicide Police Station. This department handles murder cases, which is looking into whether it was a motorcycle or a car that was there, and they're reviewing Dan to see if he had any involvement through surveillance cameras in the area. And I hope with all their resources that they're able to do something about this. This was big during the week of her death, but now that it's two weeks later, People have stopped talking about this, unfortunately. And so I'm hoping this video spurs some sort of change and like asks us to continue to question them and hold some pressure. Like, can you look into this? What's happening? She died during the time of carnival and Madonna was just in Brazil. Tourists should not be coming here risking their life. Or even citizens who live there in Brazil shouldn't have their life at risk. Where are the police? Where are the people there to protect people from stuff like this? Is this just a lawless place where everyone's at risk? If so, that's not cool. A popular news, Brazilian news entertainment website called Hugo Gloss went viral and here are some of the comments that people are saying. Let's go through them. One user says, 
This story is poorly told. That's weird right there. They can investigate it. Damn right they should, okay? Another user says, yes, my dear ones, was this a motorcycle or a car? Was it a male? Was it that male who pushed her and invented this story so that the bull sleeps? Why is this gringa, meaning foreigner, it's not a negative slur, and they don't want to do a deeper investigation? This is a good point and a common sentiment. There's some inaccurate contradictory statements. And yeah, is it a car or is it a bike? Those are different. Another user says, for me, this friend is involved. They always use the excuse of assault because it's Rio de Janeiro when they prepare something. This is an interesting point and I hope they investigate this because hypothetically it would be easy to cover up a crime in a high crime area where things like assault and robberies are common. You could just say, I didn't do anything. It's because it's real. Someone else did it and they still can't find the suspect. So this is something strange. We don't know who it is and what's happening. So these are all possibilities. And I'm glad people are calling out this story because many of Alma's friends are super sketched out about this story. We're like, what? This doesn't sound like our friend. Like Alma was very smart and she avoided, you know, situations like this. We knew that we could get robbed at all times. When I traveled with her, she was always prepared. She carried a cheap, broken Android phone that she was not scared about losing. She's like, I'm gonna carry this phone and not get a new one or replace it. So just in case it's stolen, I'll be fine. She carried little cash at all times. So she was very conscious that, hey, I'm gonna carry a little cash. If I get robbed, I'm fine. We all knew not to escalate it. We even had, me and Alma had mutual friends while we were travel, traveling together get robbed at our hostel, like on the street. And so we were like, oh, okay. As long as you like cooperate, don't overreact. Alma knew that like you could just like give them your cheap items and move on. Everything's replaceable. So this story didn't make that much sense to me knowing my friend's instincts and how smart she is. It's my opinion that she wouldn't jump off a wall and risk her life to save her cheap Android phone. The backlash was so intense that Dan Hahn, the suspect who went on the hike with her, that's a stranger, made a statement to Channel 13 News. Ynet News documented what he said, and in his statement, um, sharing Dan, Dan Hinn recounted, saying, we attempted to hail a Uber unsuccessfully, so we proceeded on foot around 6.30 p.m. A car pulled up next to us, from which an elderly man came out shouting and waving his hands. Alma, terrified, tried to escape by jumping over a fence, a low fence, and then fell. With the driver quickly fled the scene. Okay, this is a this is a whole nother narrative. We didn't hear about old man or shouting in the testimonies allegedly shared by multiple reports and the police report. So this is extra details that he's sharing on Channel 13 News. So he yelled that they were gonna rob, so rob them, so Alma jumped all down a wall and a cliff. Um, okay, like, like this, this doesn't even sound probable in Brazil. First of all, most people in Brazil don't speak English, so the fact that he just spoke English out of nowhere, hey, I don't, who knows what he said, he didn't share what they said, but I'm assuming, hey, I'm gonna rob you, and then they don't rob her them. Like I've never seen in Brazil where someone's coming up, screaming at you, threatening to rob you and don't do it. Like something doesn't sound right. And the fact that they can't even find this alleged vehicle or this alleged old man that he's saying. So I question it. It could be true. This is just a hypothesis in my opinion. Ynet News continues to share that Dan described the herring moments after Alma crossed the wall. Dan says, after searching around in the dark, I found her below. While shouting for a friend to call an ambulance, I did everything I could to keep her alive. I never left her side. When I realized she was losing strength and her pulse was weak, I performed CPR on her. Even when the ambulance arrived and she was no longer alive, I continued CPR without stopping. This is the narrative we have so far, so I hope the Brazil and Israeli government use their resources to investigate and find out what happened to my friend. Now I'm gonna share the lessons that we can learn from her death and then from her beautiful life. Here are five lessons we can learn from her tragic death. Number one, don't go on a hike or remote area where there's no cameras. 
with a stranger you just met the day before. Due to this being a very dangerous area, Brazil, especially at night, and with her being with a stranger, she put herself at risk. And this is a hard one because when you're solo traveling, you're so open to meeting new people and you want to trust everyone and believe that people are good. Even since this has happened to Alma, like I'm traveling and I'm meeting new people and I'm a little bit more weary. I'm like, let me spend a couple days before we go to a remote place. Like a friend wanted to go to a waterfall and I was like, ah, let me get to know you a little bit first before we go in the middle and you throw me into a cobra or something. Who knows? Stuff like that can happen. Number two, not everyone is your friend or who they appear to be. And don't be overly trusting. This one also is a hard lesson. Some people wear a mask to build trust with you and then they show you who they are and do terrible things once they have built that trust. Number three, don't fight back or run away from a dangerous situation. It can escalate a robbery and be fatal. A travel tip that has saved many of my friends' life who have also been robbed in Brazil is to not fight or run away. Like I said, we had a mutual friend. They were like, pass it to them because you never know. They could have a gun, they could have a knife. It could turn from a simple robbery to a fatality. Unfortunately, Brazil is a dangerous place. My Brazilian friend who lived there and is from Rio told me he moved to Portugal to escape this place that he loves because although it's beautiful and beautiful people and beautiful culture, to live in the constant fear that you could be robbed or harmed is not good for your mental health. And so he always recommended me to carry a little cash on me at all times just in case I do get robbed so I have something to give the robbers because even not having cash when they come up to rob you. He said in some cases, it could put you at risk if they could get mad that you don't have any money and harm you. Number three, avoid traveling or be careful in poverty and high crime areas. As a tourist, we wanna see everything and explore the area and the country. And there are many benefits to travel, but there are many major risks. And this is an example of it. We have to realize that this isn't just a tourist destination. Brazil is actually people's homes and there are major political safety issues, corruption issues in Brazil. And here is a statistic from a Brazilian newspaper. It's called Brazil Reports. And they say data from Rio de Janeiro's Public Security Institute reveals that cases of theft rose by 23% in 2023 compared to 2022, while robberies increased by 25%. So yeah. Robberies, it's increasing drastically year to year. And Brazil, especially Rio, and these places during Carnival, it's upticking it. And when you're in a concentrated space where you know people are really suffering, they're, they're starving, some of them. They're not getting paid very well. They're living in favelas that are run by gang members. Us tourists with all our money, we have to be conscious of that and not be so willy-nilly and like, yay, this is my world and everyone's servicing me and th they're just living in it. No, this is a hard environment and we, we get to respect it and be careful if you do visit. And here are some general safety tips that have really helped me while traveling to over 15 countries. Number one, avoid being out at night in touristic areas. Avoid being alone and send your location to friends everywhere you go and share your location via WhatsApp or Google Maps so that your loved ones know where you are. Another one is don't be stupid. I had a friend who was so adamant on wanting to see all the sides of Brazil that they even wanted to go to some of the most dangerous parts in Brazil and favelas to see what the people in the culture were. And I was like, hold up, pump your brakes. You shouldn't be in certain areas just because you want to see it and have a full holistic experience. Yay. But like, this is no joke. People are really suffering and struggling and they don't need you going around taking selfies in a impoverished area just because you feel like seeing it. A selfie is not worth your life. Now I wanna share four life lessons we can learn from Alma's beautiful life, not just the negative. Number one, travel and travel often. Don't let this story stop you from traveling and seeing the world. Alma had the mentality of I'm not waiting till I'm older to go at 65 when I retire to live life and see what the world has to offer. She got to do what she loved and pursue her passion of travel even before she died. She got to do what most people don't ever get to do in their life. And she got to do it at 24. Obviously, again, be safe, be careful, do your research, and you know, be smart. Number two, dance until you can't no more. Me and Alma, we love to dance. And like I shared the video, here's the video again of us dancing on the beach and she, 
you know, love to have fun and meet new people. Number three, buy and wear what you want, whether that's jewelry or anything that makes you happy. You do it, you won't regret it later. One thing about my girl, she loved to shop. Every time we went somewhere, she was getting something new, whether it was an extra sandwich, uh, a mango, uh, a coconut, and that jewelry. She had the mentality that you have only one life, so you might as well live it. And we bought these necklaces together. She has matching necklaces, and I'll always cherish this and um, wear this and remember. And the fourth one is meet new people and be open to new friends. One thing I loved about her was how open she was. And I can be a pretty closed off person sometimes. And she's like the opposite of that. Like I said, when I first met her, she was immediately open and kind and loving. She's also solo traveling. So any new person that came to our hostel or uh, when we're on the street or in a new place, she was there. She would, she was open and loving and we have to be careful. But, you know, I don't think that should keep us locked up in a house, not opening up. I don't think that's the remedy to avoid something like this. We get to trust people, but trust and verify. That's it, guys. I'm going to miss my friend. And I, I really hope that justice is found for what happened to her. I hope we get to, we all got to learn from her beautiful and tragic life story. And um, here's some beautiful photos to remember from her again and some of her beautiful life that I got from her Instagram. And I had the pleasure of getting to know her, rest in heaven, girl, I got you and I'm gonna fight for you. If something did happen to you, best believe I'm gonna find it or I'm gonna at least push forward and use my voice. And please share this and let's do justice for Alma. And huh, all right, I'm gonna go to the gym cause I'm tired and this was a hard ass video, I'm stressed out. Love you guys, until next time.